ஹாப்பி குரு பூர்ணிமா ஓம் வாகர்த்தா விவசம் பிரக்தோ வாகர்த்தோ பிரதிபத்தையே கதகப்பித்தரோ வந்தே பார்வதி பரமேஸ்வரோ ஐந்து கரத்தனை யானை முகத்தனை இந்தின் இளம்பிறை போலும் எயிற்றனை நந்தி மகந்தனை ஞான கொழுந்தனை புந்தியில் வைத்தடி போற்றுகின்றேனே ஓம் நம பிரணவார்த்தாய சுத்த ஞானைக்கு மூர்த்தையே நிர்மலாய பிரசாந்தாய தட்சிணாமூர்த்தையே நமக ஒன்றவன் தானே இரண்டவன் இன்னருள் நின்றனன் மூன்றினுள் நான்கு உணர்ந்தனன் ஐந்து வென்றனன் ஆறு விருந்தனன் ஏழும் பார்ச்சனனன் தான் இருந்தான் உணர்ந்து எட்டே ஸ்ருதி ஸ்மிருதி புராணா நாம் ஆலயம் கருணாலயம் நமாமி பகவத்பாத சங்கரம் லோகசங்கரம் சங்கரம் சங்கராச்சாரியம் கேசவம் பாதராயணம் சூத்ரவாஷ்ய கிருத்தோ வந்தே பகவந்தோ புன புன அதிமதுரச்சாபஸ்தாம் அபரிமிதமோதசௌபாகியாம் அருணாமதிஷயகருணாம் அபிநவகுலசுந்தரீம் வந்தே சுதா சிந்தோர்மே சுரவிட்டிவாட்டி பரிவத்தே மணிதீபே நிபோபவனவதி சிந்தாமணிகே சிவாக்காரே மஞ்சே பரமசிவபரியங்கநிலையாம் பஜந்தி தாம் தன்யாகம் கதிச்சன சிதானந்தலஹரி சோ பியூட்டிஃபுல் வேர்ஸ் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் யூ ஆல்ரெடி நோ த மீனிங் ஃப்ரம் ஆத்ம பிரகாஷானந்த ஜீஸ் கிளாஸ் சோ வாட் வி வில் டூ இஸ் த மீனிங் தட்ஸ் நாட் சோ ஆப்வியஸ் பட் வில் கோ த்ரூ த மீனிங் பட் வி வில் ஆல்சோ go a little deeper as usual and what is deeper <laughs> there's no no end to the depth that you can go on this it'll go on it's it's this you can never find the bottom of this ocean of soundarya lahari so but we will try little bit sudha sindhora madhye sudha sindhora madhye in the middle of the ocean of nectar sudha sindhora nectar portion of nectar wow <laughs> even even for a little pot full of nectar you know the devas and the asuras they had to work so hard churning the ocean just for a pot full of nectar oh, here is she is what she is a ocean ocean of nectar and she lives in that her her her, her home her island is in this ocean of nectar Wow. Oh, it's not that. And now, Acharya is taking us from the outside. He's kind of zooming in, giving us a visual picture. Like if you go on a rocket all the way up there and start zooming onto the earth, so that's how he's showing it to us. So first he's showing us the ocean of nectar. And in that ocean of nectar, there are these wish fulfilling vrikshas kalpaka you know kalpa vriksham we call it kalpa vriksham suravitha so that is kalpa vriksham the next zoom in and after that kalpa vriksham is this island so this island is surrounded by the kalpa vriksham and then what kind of island is an island of gems and in that island of gems we still not in our house in our abode so even in that island of gems there is a garden that that she made for herself what kind of garden neepa upavana upavana means it's a little garden little garden not a forest but upavana like a park a mixed up park so then and what kind of trees that garden has is a different kind of trees here these are kadamba trees in that 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 island that surrounded by kalpa vrikshas then within that we have upavana of kadamba trees so that kadamba vanam so island of gems then we have upavana of kadamba trees and then now we are zooming in close to our house 
which is Chintamani Grihe. I'm just going to bring in some subtle points here. So first Acharya started with the Kalpa Vrikshas. Then he's talked about Kadamba trees. And then he started an island of gems, Manidvipe. Now then the Griha is not Manigraha, it's Chinta Manigraha. So right, right off the bat, what you see here is Suravita Pivati. This is Kalpa Vrikshas. Now these are, there is a sharp contrast here in every line. What is terrestrial and what is celestial? I'm going to be using these two terms frequently. So that's what the contrast that is brought out here. What is terrestrial and what is celestial? So terrestrial, the gems we know, most of the gems we know. So the gems, so there's island of gems. So you, you can compare or you can have an idea. All these gems, what are they? And then also Chintamani, which none of us have seen. Chintamani is a wish-fulfilling gem. So that is astral, celestial. Same way, we have seen Kadamba trees. Madurai was once upon a time surrounded by Kadamba trees. So Meenakshi is known as Kadamba Vanavasini. Lalita Parameshwari is known as Kadamba Vanavasini. So these are all terrestrial, we know that. But then that Kalpaka Vriksha doesn't exist here. Doesn't exist here. Now, the pinnacle of this, like they say, icing on the cake, is Shivakara Manche. So there are two words again. Shivakara Manche. Mancha, you know, it's a very common word. It's a cart. Um, in Telugu, we call it mancham, cart. Then in Tamil, cattle and so on, but it's a familiar word, cart. But then Paryankam. Paryankam also means closely cart, but Paryankam means more than a cart. We will see. So why is he using mancha and why is he using paryanka? And then for the mancha, the adjective that he is using is shivakara, shivakara mancha, infused with the shiva tattvam, shivakaram. It's all full of shivakara mancha. But then the other one, exactly the one that she seated upon is paramashiva paryanka, paramashiva paryanka nilayam. So that Paramashiva Paryankam is more closely attached to her than the Shivakara Mancha. Finally, he brought us to her. And then whoever worships you, O Divine Mother, Bhajanti Thvam Dhanyaha Katichana, very few people worship you like this. One in a crore, not even thousand, one in a crore people worship you like this and then what happens to them who worship you like this in their heart temple they achieve the status of Satchidananda and realize you as Chidananda Lahari beautiful sequence so in this verse he has given us beautiful methodology a marga a route how to go about worshipping her and then what is the goal? When you worship her this way, what is the goal that you'll reach? All that is presented to us in these four lines. So, like I mentioned, there are two residences for her. Sumeru Madhya Sringastha, Sriman Nagaranayika. Lita Sahasrana mentions two of those. Sri Nagaram and then Sumeru Madhya. There is a city for her, Sumeru Madhya which also could mean the Bindu on the Mahameru top, Sumeru Madhya. And also, we have the, the three peaks of the Meru, Brahma Loka, Vishnu Loka, and Shiva Loka. And top of all this, topping all this, is Sumeru Madhya Shringastha. That is Devi's abode, top, topping of all these three. That is one. And the other one is Sri Puram. Which is what Acharya is talking about here. What is described here is the Sri Puram, Sri Nagaram, which sits in the ocean of ambrosia, which is in the ocean of nectar. Now, these are the differences I like to bring out. What, why is the difference between why is he using Kalpaka and Kadamba? 
what's the difference between mani and chinta mani uh, who is shiva and who is parama shiva shiva kara manche parama shiva paryanka nilayam and what is mancha and what is paryanka we'll discuss that and the celestial world the five trees that are notable mandara parijata santhana kalpaka and harichandana but what you are to top what, what you are talking about here is two these two trees kalpaka and kadamba trees Kalpa Vriksha is more astral than Kadamba. Kadamba Vriksha is terrestrial. And Kalpa Vriksha you are not going to find on the physical plane. You are not going to go around the world looking for a tree, wish-fulfilling tree. doesn't exist. She is the wish-fulfilling tree. So Divine Mother is the wish-fulfilling tree. And then how do you go to that wish-fulfilling tree in the celestial world? through the kadamba tree that he is showing us acharya is showing us in the terrestrial world so through what we have in the terrestrial plane we have to go to the celestial plane and then in um, kalidasa also in shyamala dandakam beautifully says this is a beautiful verse mata maragada shyama matangi madashalini kuryat kataksham kalyani kadamba vanavasini Beautiful Shyamala Tandakam. So he talks about Kadamba Vanavasini. Now, Chintamani Grihe Mani Dhipe. Chintamani is more astral than money. Chintamani, you are not going to find it here, like I said, on the physical plane of the universe. Gems you can find. And then that's like I said, terrestrial to the celestial. Mancha, straightforward meaning is bed or cart. Paryanka has multifold meaning. It also means bed or a cart couch. But then the meaning that I want you to pay attention to Paryanka. Paryanka is something that is bound to the body. Paryanka is, is, is something that clasps, clasps, clasps you, clasps, clasps you and encircles you. Also, there is another definition for Paryanka, which is a cloth wound around the back and loins and knees. So while sitting, the way of sitting also, like when you squat on the floor, it's also called paryanka, it's called position. So paryanka has many different connotations than mancha. So paryanka nilayam is more subtler state. So when Acharya says paryanka nilayam, so that is a more subtler state, more sukshma level, then mancha. So that is why Shivakara manche. Paramashiva Paryanka Nilayam. So Paramashiva Paryanka Nilayam is more sukshmam than Shivakara Mancham. So we will see what is the difference between Parat Parashiva, what is the difference between Paramashiva, and what is the difference between Shiva. So it is gradations. Parat Parashiva, Paramashiva, and just Shiva. So same way, Devi also is three categories. Parat Parai, Parat Para Devi, Parat Parai Devi, then Para Devi, like Paramashiva, Para Devi, then just Devi Shakti. So Parat Para Shakti, Para Shakti, and Shakti. So this Parat Para Shakti and Parat Para Parameshwara are the original state, the beyond all this manifestation, Paratpara Parameshwara and Paratpara Parameshwari are the original state of being. Now here, the focus is totally on Shakti alone. So with reference to Shakti, Shiva is placed in different places. So, so, so where she is sitting in a cart called Manche, called, called Shivakara Manche. And then what, what is a Paryanka? Then that is Paramashiva Paryanka. So it's always with reference to Devi that uh, things surrounding her are described, the things that are attached to her are described, that where she lives, island, is always with reference to her, that the, she is the point of reference. She is the main focus here. So like I said, Parat Parashiva, Paramashiva, and Shiva. Now, the level zero, what I call the ground zero level, is where it's pure jnana shakti, 
ground level is pure jnana shakti where it's parat para shiva parat para shiva and parat para shakti parat para shakti beyond the beyond beyond the beyond that is the original state what i call ground zero so where it is pure jnanam where it is pure sachidanandam so when does that become parama shiva and para shakti after the first two verse in saundarya lahari shiva shaktya yukto yadi bhavati so when they unite then they become manifest as para shakti and then para shiva so and then from the subtle manifestation when they come to the little grasser manifestation they are known as shiva and shakti so remember these three states shiva and shakti so which is what we see in this entire cosmos as feminine and masculine so shiva shakti so when i was giving a talk on sri rudram the eighth anuvakam starts with this beautiful verse namasomay cha rudraya cha namastamraay cha arunaya cha so namasomay cha the soma word means saha umaya cha along with uma so it cannot be separated from uma namasomaya cha even if you take a picture when look at the genes picture of the genes that we have you will have see two strands intertwined together one would be shiva and the other would be shakti the blue and the red they'll be like this blue and the red so that is the shiva shakti level of manifestation everything is shiva and a shakti so that is that is level 2 so that's ground level level 1 parama shiva paryanka nilayam shiva shakti from ground 0 level 1 is parama shiva paryankam so why parama shiva paryankam because once the creation started shiva is only the base shiva is only the base you know like most of you cook you have a base and then you add to it all the other things so the base is shiva but upon him all this play takes place so like you have you have you make a batter of rice batter with rice and you make all kind of stuff you can make dosa you can make idli you can make whatever you want to make or you can make pesarat a different batter but the base is the same you know like rice is the base so so and if it's just a crude example just to give you an idea so based on him on that on that and that paryankam based on him which cannot be separated from her once you get to the mancha level can be separated you see men and women you see male elephant female elephant you see hen and a pig cock peacock p peacock which is the male and p hen is the female <clears throat> same way you see chicken and then you have the you have the rooster so the male and the female so everything so that is for the removed from paryanka nilaya so that is parama shiva paryanka nilayam so that paryankam that bondage something that tied to her cannot be separated upon which all the play of creation takes place and now to go little more deeper the nadam after shiva and shakti unite first thing is nadam so that nadam which is parama shiva and para shakti and then after that is the bindu which is shivakara manche and then more differentiation comes about from the bindu on top of the meru you see how the creation diverses goes like that so but then above the bindu is the nadam that is parama shiva paryank nilayam and then shivakara manche is that bindu level from where the whole expansion takes place coming all the way down to the base of the meru and in between all the stages of creations all the triangles male female and all that and and circles and all the yantras shivakara manche and then infused with the energy of shiva 
பரம சிவ பரியங்கம் சிவ ஆகாரம் அஞ்சே அண்ட் பரம சிவ பரியங்கம் ஸோ தேட்ஸ் அ மெயின் டிஃப்ரென்ஸ் இயர் ஆன் லெவல் ஒன் அண்ட் லெவல் டூ நவ் தேஸ் ஹவ் பின் சங் பை சைன்ஸ் அப்பர் திருஞா திருநாவுக்கரசர் வாஸ் அ கிரேட் சிவா சைன்ட் இன் த செவன் சென்ச்சுரி இன் தமிழ்நாடு ஹீ வாண்டட் டு கோ டு கைலாஷ் not after his death but while he was alive in his body he, in those days no transportation the first person to reach kailash in the physical body was karekalamayar in the 6th century she is the first of the nine mars so she walked all the way to kailash and then when she reached kailash she didn't want to walk on her feet most of you from other states may not know these but these are this is history from tamil nadu from 5th 6th century shiva saints so karekalamayar walked to kailash and when she walked over there close to kailash she didn't want to walk on her feet because she didn't want to touch the holy holy ground of kailash on by her feet so she walked on her hands a lady walked on her hands so reached all the way to where parvati parameshwara were there and then parvati was so astounded that this old fry lady how did she get here in the first place on top of it now she is walking on hands how is that possible so then 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 she asked who is that that is coming parameshwara said amma is coming <laughs> amma is coming parvati was shocked he says you are an orphan you were never you know you never had a father or a mother how can there be a mother for you he said no she adopted me and i adopted her she is my mother amma is coming parvati <laughs> looked okay okay let her come so when she comes she was so happy with the devotion so parameshwara and parvati ask her what kind of boon she needs so she asked for two one is i don't want to come back here again <laughs> no physical body and if ever i do i should always remember you so which means that if ever she has to come back one is i shouldn't come back here give me the boon that i shouldn't come back and if i do come back give me a boon that i shouldn't forget you peravamai vendum meendum pirakkil unnai endrum maravamai vendum good so i said okay granted and what is the next one you want the next one is iraiva naan paada nee aada vendum i will sing and you have to dance <laughs> see the beauty here is when a bhakta with love can bind the deity the god with the love you can now command he say i will sing and you have to dance <laughs> same thing arunagirinadar did the same thing with lord subramanya and he'll sing arunagirinadar will sing and subramanya would come and dance just like that this is our real history that happened right here in Thiru. arunagirinadar is from tiruvannamalai where i am now tiruvannamalai if you go into the tiruvannamalai temple there's a shrine for arunagirinadar and there's one of the tower is called named after a, a historical event in his life it's called kiligopuram the parrot tower that's when and when he left the world he left as a parrot there was uh, some of you know the story so arunagiri nadar whenever he is saying lord subramanya would come and dance muttai tarvatti tirunagai atti kirajatti charavana mutti koruvittu guru par enna vodum mokkat paramarkku churudiyan murpattad karpit so on dan 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 the dance goes on so same way karakalamaya is asking lord shiva and i sing you should dance <laughs> he says okay no problem but parvati cannot dance in this shape and uh, form that she is in so what we will do is you go to thiru alangad in tamil nadu thiru alangad is a place um close by here between chennai and here you go there and then we both of us will come and parvati will come as a different form as kali and then we will do the dance for you so and that was a boon that she has so karikal ammayar comes all the way back to tiruvalangadu in tiruvalangadu there is this ghouls and ghosts and <laughs> all kind of ghosts all kind of weird things and then 
And then she, with the power of yoga dandam, she drives away all those ghosts, ghosts and ghouls. Not only she drives away in her andadi, she describes how these ghosts are. This one ghost is eating half a flesh. One ghost is gone hungry. One ghost, one ghost has gone to sleep half hungry. All this description she gives us beautifully. Finally, Parvati Parameshwara comes, and then they, uh, the Kali and Shiva Nataraja, they come as Nataraja and Kali. They do a wonderful dance. Now, this event. This event is immortalized. This historical event is immortalized in stone. Where? Many places in the world. The first place is Madurai. If you ever go to Madurai near Swami Sannadi, there are these two huge vigrahams, two huge, one of Shiva all the way up like that. And right next to him is Kali. And under the feet of Shiva, if you look, there is this tiny skeletal form of an old woman. That is Karikalamayar. Not only here in Tamil Nadu, also in Indonesia, in Bali, in Malaysia, you would see statues carved of Nataraja and at the feet of whom is Karikalamayar. Because once upon a time, during the Chola kingdom, Saivism was all over the world, pretty much. So that's when these all these vigrahams were carved and Saivism was taken. Biggest temple was in Angkor Wat. So, all that. So, Karikalamayar is immortalized now. She is the after 63 Nayanmars. And if you ever go to ever go to Chamundi Hills, as soon as you finish doing worship Chamundi Hills, please go to the Shiva temple right next to it. Do go there. The reason I say go there because that's a very huge temple where you see all these statues of 63 saints, where the first one would be Karakalamiyar. She is the only one who will be sitting down. The rest of them will be standing up. Why? Because such a great devotee of Lord Shiva. So this is, this is, this is Shiva Shakti, the dance of Shiva and Shakti. So upper, he goes to Kailas. After Karakalamiyar, he wanted to go there in, in physical body. Jnana Sambandar was right away taken. So when he did a huge havan there, it was on his wedding day. If he was 16, after he accomplished all his work, through Jnana Sambandar, he invited everybody to his wedding. And after the havan was over, then this huge light opened up. And he said, let's go, whoever is here, whoever came, every, from the peon, from the janitor, everybody who came to his wedding, they all entered that light and reached Kailasha reached Moksha. So they were all the fortunate ones. In these days, if you put in your wedding invitation that if you come to our wedding, we will all take you to Kailasha, you will not have anybody in your wedding. <laughs> so, but in those days, Jnana Samantha took everyone there. So same way, Upper is going there, physical body. He is, he is 80 years old, 80, 80. And then he cannot walk, so he crawls. All his things, skin is all gone. And then Shiva tests him, comes and tests him. Why you are take, taking this stupid venture? Just go back. You, you will kill yourself. He says, I don't care even if I die. This body is not worth anything until I reach and see my Lord in Kailash. So the reason I'm telling this story is coming back to the... The, the Shivakara Mancha verse is all related to that. So finally, Lord Shiva that gives up because this is a competition between Shiva and Upper and Lord Shiva gives up. I said, this guy is not going to give up, so I will give up. So he comes as an old man and say, he says, listen. He first he tries to again try to convince him not to go. So when he's so insistent that he'll keep going, Shiva says, Shiva shows himself, okay, no problem. You don't have to come to Kailash. I will create a pond here. So you dip yourself in the pond, or when you come out of the pond, you will be coming out at Thiruvayaru. Thiruvayaru, the pond of the Thiruvayaru temple, that's where you will come up. And when you come up, you will have a darshan of complete Kailasha right there in Thiruvayaru. So that day, where he went into the pond up north 
and reappeared in the south is still celebrated in Thiruvayaru annual day. It's coming up um, in the next few weeks. Now, when this happened, when he dipped himself in the pond and reappeared in Thiruvayaru, how did he see Kailash? This is how he saw it. Shivakara Manche. Mother Pirai Kanyanai Malayan Mahalodum Padi Ododu Neer Sumande Ti Bhuvar Avar Bin Puguvain Yadam Suvardu Padamal Ayar Adaigin Rapodu Ayar Adaigin Kadal madapidi yodun kaliru varu vanakandain. Kadal madapidi yodun kaliru varu vanakandain. Kandain avar dirupadam kandariyadanakandain. Kandain our Thirupadam, Kandariya than a Kandain, Kandain our Thirupadam, Kandariya than a Kandain, Kandain our Thirupadam, Kandariya than a Kandain. So, like this, he sings ten songs in a Padiga. Padiga means group of ten songs. In each one of them, this is how he describes. In the first one, he says, how I saw Kailash in Thiruvayaru. I saw all the celestial maidens taking water and flower for the worship of Lord Shiva, and I went along with them. So when I went along with them, then what happened? Then, without any footmarks, any trace of my footmark, I reached Thiruvayar, which means he didn't walk all the way, which means he was astrally transported. Yadam Suvadu Padamalayar. So when he reached Thiruvayar, what did he see? He said, I saw everything in pair, like the male elephant, female elephant. Kadal madapidi yodum kaliru. And then what else? In every stanza, this is what he says. Just an example. So, Kaliru, Kadal Madapidi Yodum Kaliru. Then the, 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 the pea hen and the peacock. Then the, then the cuckoo, the male cuckoo and the female cuckoo. Then he saw the female swan and the male swan. Then he saw the deer, female deer, doe. Doe, a deer, a female deer. So, he saw the female deer. And the male deer. Now, and then he saw the larger version, what we call Kalaimon, which is the stag, female stag, and the male one. I don't know what they call it, the female one. The male is called the stag. So all this he saw in pairs. And he said, everywhere I saw Shiva Shakti. So the creation, Shakti, was based on Shiva, Shiva Kara Manche. Saints have seen this. And this is level two, where from the Parameshwara Paryanka Nilayam, one level more grasser. Shiva Shakti, the entire universe is Shiva Shakti. Your genes is Shiva Shakti. Shivakaram Manches. It's on that Shivakaram that creation takes place. <laughs> now, Whatever I told you so far has been given in two paragraphs by Thirumalar so beautifully. This process of, like I said, ground, ground zero, where in their pristine level, Parvati and Parameshwara, Paratpara Parameshwara, Paratpara Parameshwari, Paratpara Shakti, Paratpara Shiva are in the pristine original state called the Jnana state. Now in that Jnana state, what happened? Shiva Shaktya Yukcha, Icha Shakti came. Then Icha Shakti, then the Icha Shakti became Kriya Shakti. So that is the Kriya Shakti is level two, Shiva Kara Manche. Icha Shakti is the level one, Parameshwara. So it's based on that 
Shiva. She was never separated from Shiva. She could never be separated from Shiva. It just the formats kept changing, but they were always together, subtle, subtlest, gross, more grosser. You know, like I told you on the other class, that pristine, nothing, quantum level, zero, no particle, nothing, pristine level in the original state of being. And then you have the virtual particle, then you have the particle, then you have sukshma panchatattvas, then you have sthula panchatattvas, then this creation. All these mechanics, they're all, they're all fit together, all the puzzles, the piece of the puzzles fit together. Like if you read Shankaracharya's Tattva Bodham, when he describes how the Sukshma Panchabhutas do what is called Panchikaranam, and then become the Sthula Panchabhutas, and how the creation comes about. They all fit together in this verse, exactly. So this is how Thirumola describes, Adiyod Andha Milada Paraparam. In the Paratpara level, which neither has origin or end. Adiyod Andha Milai, which means there is no end or beginning. That's a Paratpara level. Paratpara, Paratpara, Parameshwara, Paratpara Shakti. Then Parameshwara, then Parashakti. Then just Shiva Shakti. That's, that's how it comes about. Bodhamadaha Punarum Parapurai. Then the union takes place. So then what happens? Then from that Jyoti, the Jyoti, which is the, the, the transcendent life, from the Jyoti, then param dondra tondramam tidil parai. Then the Shakti manifests herself. And then the Nadam comes about. And then from the Nadam, the Bindu comes about. Nada til vindavum, nada vindukalil tidatrakti, tidatraham vanda sivan shakti, shiva shakti, shivakara manche. Yanave bedit. Then the difference is here more pronounced. Bedam means the bedit. Jnanam kriyai parandadal. So from the pure state of jnana, icha, kriya came about. Now we all have to go back to where we came from. What is that? Jnana. And Acharya shows us right in this verse how to get back to that jnana. How does he show it? Visualize Divine Mother in this form, like I have described to you. Meditate upon her in your, in your heart, in this form, like she exists in this island of gems, in this in this beautiful form. And then in the previous verse, he has given us what she holds in her hand. So like that, meditate. And then hold, make, make your heart her residence. Now, before you make your heart her residence, there are a couple of th other things you have to do. What are those? That, that mani dipam. Your body, physical body is a dipam. Dipam. Dipam means island. So this island, you know, you, you have to, Everything has to be so pure. You have to be like pure. Your thoughts have to be like pure, like a gem, you know, like, like a gem of a thought. So there is no reason, there is no place for impurity there. So if you, all your actions, all your thoughts, like a gem of an action, gem of a thought, and gem of commitment, gem of devotion. So that is refining your physical body, refining your thought, refining your stola sharira, refining your sukshma sharira, and then you surround that with the protective trees of terrestrial trees, Kadamba. Protect your celestial island, protect your island with these Kadamba trees, the terrestrial trees. Then as you go to the subtler level, protect it with the Kalpa Vrikshas. Then and bring her into the heart of your heart of your Chintamani Grihe. When you do that, what happens? When you do that, then she is Chidananda Lahari. That's how he ends the verse. Chidananda Lahari. What happens? Then you go back to the Jnana state where all this started. Satchidananda state. Satchidanandam. Sat Chitanandam. Chidananda Lahari. Uh, what a verse. Adiyodanda milada paraparam bodamadaha punaram paraparai 
சோதி அதனில் பறந்தோன்ற தோன்றுமாம் தீதில் பற அதன்பால் திகழ் நாதமே நாதத்தில் விந்துவும் நாத விந்துக்களில் தீதற்றகம் வந்த சிவன் சக்தி என்னவே பேதித்து ஞானம் கிரியை பிறத்தால் வாதித்த இச்சையில் வந்தலும் விந்துவே டென்த் திருமுறை செகண்ட் தந்திரம் நைன்த் சாப்டர் சர்வசிருஷ்டி டைட்டில் பரமசிவ பரியங்க நிலையம் பெர்மனன்ட் அபோட் that's a permanent abode because paryanka means something that is tied and attached cannot be separated paramashiva who personifies the parabrahmam and on his lap is seated amba that is paramashiva paryanka cannot be separated in whatever condition they are sukshma sukshma tara like the, the light cannot be separated from the sun the white color cannot be separated from milk that's how they are together your genes have them together in the red and the blue <laughs> paryanka paryanka has these different connotations bed couch cloth on around the hip and the lap chidananda lahari so <laughs> chidananda lahari katichana dhanyaha ambajante a few fortunate worship you once in a crore now there are four goals in our spiritual path to achieve one is salokya mukti samipya mukti sarupya mukti and sayujya mukti all that is described here so when you worship here start purifying yourself protecting yourself the way that acharya describes and making your thoughts and all gems what happens you reach your loka you reach the loka of devi <laughs> you go to sripuram so that is salokyam then you still further make an effort then you go close to her samipyam then you immerse yourself in her devotion then sarupyam you 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 bring her into you that is she is you she so bring her into you sarupyam then you merge in her <laughs> so all this is steps are shown here in this particular verse so you enter into her loka in every step of the way you go finally you reach that sayujyam and reach that level of jnana where parat para and parat parai are in the pristine state in achidananda lahari ananda lahari so summarize sachidananda lahari ground zero jnana level that's where chidananda lahari is parat para shiva ultimate natural state of being of shiva parat para shakti ultimate natural state of being of shakti so that is parat para now where is the proof for all this we have classic examples in abhirami andadi abhirami patter who did exactly what acharya wanted him to do he made a home for divine mother in her in his heart so and then he talks about it in these two verses where is your temple o divine mother uraigindra nin tirukoyil nin kelvar oru vakkamo araigindra naan marayin adiyo mudiyo amudam niragindra ven thingalo where are you are you in the vedas are you in the moon are you here are you there no 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 or in the gold or in the na endha nenjagame you are here onrai arimbi palavai virindu you manifest yourself in this cosmos every you are everywhere anaitayum neengi nirpal you are beyond everything even though you have manifested this whole cosmos and infused yourself into this you are still beyond this away from this and then where are you finally you are in my heart ondra arimbi pi even though you are all this but for the devotee you made yourself a home in the heart of a loving devotee ondra arimbi palavai virindu ulagengumai nindral anaitayum neengi nirpal endan nenjinulle ondradu nindru porugindrava ipporul arivar not many people know this andru aalilayil thuyindra pemmanum en ayyanume this is lalita sasanam சிஞ்சான ஸ்ரீமணிமஞ்சீர் மண்டித ஸ்ரீபதாம்புஜ ராளிமந்தகமனா மகாலாவண்யசேவதி சர்வாருணானவியாங்கி 
ಸರ್ವಾಭರಣಭೂಷಿತಾ ಶಿವ ಕಾಮೇಶ್ವರ್ ಹಾಂಗಸ್ತ ಶಿವ ಸ್ವಾಧೀನವಲ್ಲಭಾ ಸೋಮೇರು ಮಧ್ಯ ಶೃಂಗಸ್ತ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ನಗರ ನಾಯಿಕ ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿ ಗೃಹಾಂತಸ್ಥ ಪಂಚಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಸನಸ್ಥಿತ ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿ ಗೃಹಾಂತಸ್ಥ ಲಲಿತಾ ಸಹಸ್ರ ನಾವು ಚಸ್ಟ್ ರಫ್ ಅನಾಲಜಿ ಕೋರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಸಾಲೋಕ್ಯ ಸಾಮೀಪ್ಯ ಸಾರೂಪ್ಯ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಾಯುಜ್ಯ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಅನ್ನಮಯ ಕೋಶ ಪ್ರಾಣಮಯ ಕೋಶ ಮನಾಮಯ ಕೋಶ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಮಯ ಕೋಶ ಆನಂದಮಯ ಕೋಶ ಅಂಡ್ ಫೈನಲಿ ಯು ದಿಸ್ ಸೋಲ್ so all these coverings is what acharya described here the more and more you purify you make each and every one of the gem and you make you make each and every one of this layer celestial transfer transform them from terrestrial to celestial then you go progressively you go from salokya you reach your world and then you reach her world the island and then you go close to her then you are kind of one with the palms or rupyam then you become ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲನೇಷನ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಗುರು ಪೂರ್ಣಿಮಾ ಅಮಿಕೋ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸುಧಾ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಗುರು ಪೂರ್ಣಿಮಾ ಟು ಯು ಆಲ್ ಟೂ thank you sir this was so beautiful unbelievable that i am listening to something so wonderful so wonderful on this guru purnima thank you neeru ji <laughs> thank you guru ji very good happy thank guru purnima thank to you thank happy guru happy guru purnima happy guru purnima guru ji happy yeah. guru purnima satish ji satish ji happy guru purnima very good thank you ji thank you guru purnima happy thank guru sir for the beautiful explanation the way you said we have to visualize and meditate on the divine mother and Absolutely. purify the heart and yeah. that body mind thoughts uh, no words on this auspicious day it's a blessing to listen to you and to be a part of the session thank you so much sir thank you you're very welcome you're very welcome preeta ji i see vinita ji is also there <laughs> <laughs> she is a yoga priya <laughs> yoga priya yeah, so that's my spiritual name <laughs> the spiritual name very good good very good you all have a wonderful uh, guru purnima one more time and then we'll see you in our next class sorry we missed our class that's the day we came landed in bangalore so saturday morning you landed and reached the ashram around the afternoon 3 pm so there are a lot of activities in the ashram and next week we have huge activities coming up uh saturday august 3rd is again travel day for me so there won't be any class i will flying back to the states to florida so once we reach there then i'll let shalini know how we can proceed with further classes hmm? so i know